In the American colonies, tobacco, rice, corn, whiskey, wampum, gunpowder, pelts, and cattle were all used at one time or another as money. Tobacco served as money in the early history of our country for more than 200 years, but the farmers eventually grew so much tobacco that it lost its value as money. Through the centuries, many other things served as money, but none ever replaced the precious metals in any vibrant economy until the advent of banking and the use of paper money. When life was simple, barter worked very well. If two cats are traded for one dog, this is barter. If the two cats are worth $25 each and the dog $50, then we say money serves as a standard of value or a unit of account. Thus, even in barter, money almost always acts as a measure of value. No other means of comparing values has ever been devised. If the farmer had to trade the dentist a calf for a gold tooth, the dentist, the calf for an automobile, and the automobile dealer, the calf for his groceries, our economy would come to a screeching halt. There was a time in the history of the world when cattle actually served as money, but today a bull in the airport would scarcely solve the airline passengers' problems. Furthermore, it would be hard to settle how many miles a person could be carried for two cows, a bull, and three calves. How could you pay for a hotel room in Paris? For thousands of years, man has used some commonly accepted article as a go-between in making purchases and sales. In this way, barter is eliminated. Money is the universal carrier of the purchasing power, or credit, which moves wealth from person to person. Money is a medium of exchange, and the same money can be used hundreds of times. It transfers wealth back and forth from person to person, like telephone lines carry information. The telephone line is only the carrier, it is not the information. Similarly, money is only the carrier that transfers the title to wealth. It is not the real wealth. Money is like a public bus. It is available for all to use. There are a limited number of buses, but unlimited numbers of people can use them. In reality, money is a public utility and should be managed in much the same way as a bus system. Each bus in a transportation system must make a round trip if it is to serve its purpose. If some of the buses pile up at the end of the line and do not return, many people will be left without transportation. The same is true of a money system. If the farmer pays $10,000 for his machinery and only $9,000 comes back to him for his grain, he is forced out of business in a very short time. This sort of problem has happened frequently in America, and that is why we have had such things as farm programs. Because of a multitude of factors, it has sometimes seemed necessary for the government to force the money buses to make a round trip through the use of subsidies. Money and production must be kept in balance if prices are not to rise and fall. Erratic quantities of money can cause erratic production of goods and services or erratic price fluctuations. Balance is the important thing. An economy may be in balance with any quantity of money. It may be in balance with five cent ice cream cones, with 50 cent cones, or even with $100 cones. It is the changing from five cent cones to $100 cones and then back to five cent cones that creates problems in an economy. A constantly increasing or decreasing supply of money without an increasing or decreasing quantity of goods and services keeps the economy continuously out of balance. Money also acts as a temporary storehouse of a claim to wealth a method of saving a product or service for future use. For example, it is impossible to save a banana for more than a few days, but by using money, one can delay the eating of a banana for weeks or years, providing someone is still growing bananas. Money is almost always confused with wealth. We say people are wealthy if they have lots of money. 
If you think money is wealth, then picture yourself on a desert island with a billion dollars, but with nothing to buy and no way to get off the island. How wealthy would you be? But if you were on an island with no money, but with plenty of food, clothing, and shelter, you would be well off because you would have all of the necessities of life. 